among other protesters, useful idiots that occupied the Capitol Rotunda, over 200 were arrested. They call themselves Jewish Voice for Peace. I doubt they're Jewish, and they certainly aren't advancing the cause of peace. They are supporting murder. Claire Lopez, you were in D.C. yesterday. I want to commend you for your courage to walk amongst the maniacs. I've seen it on television. I'm going to ask you to tell us about it, how rough it was. And in particular, there's a specific group that I find disgusting beyond words, and I'm referring to Jewish Voice for Peace. It's a radical group that neither represents Jews or Jewish values, but that's what they call themselves. By the way, one of their largest monetary supporters, no surprise, George Soros. Check out the video from yesterday. I was pleased to see them being arrested somewhere, depending who you believe, 200 and 250 of these maniacs were told to leave the Capitol Rotunda. They didn't. And they were zip tied and let out. As I said, like their sister organization, Code Pink, another George Soros organization, they're anarchists. These groups, at least JVP, proclaims themselves to be Jewish without any Jewish values or attachments to Israel. Part and parcel of being Jewish is the biblical admonition to return to Zion, which is Jerusalem. But they've rewritten the Bible, so to speak, and they have their own interpretations. Tell us what it was like amongst these people in D.C. yesterday. Well, you know, I have to say I was a little bit surprised. Yes, at the numbers of clearly identifiable, self-identifying Jewish protesters who were very vocal against uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, against Israel itself. There were speakers up on on a a stage they had set up that included Jill Stein and Susan Sarandon and many more of the same ilk. Nihad Awad, the executive director of CARE, spoke there as well on that stage. But overall, I have to say, in the broader groups, I have to say plural, groups of protesters yesterday, I was surprised at how few jihadi types or even Muslim Brotherhood front group types I saw. The vibe, which was kind of weird, seemed to be more like a bunch of hippies, like (laughs) modern day hippies. We're talking purple hair, pierced noses and everything else, tattoos all over the place, but then draped in kafias. And the truth is that they were actually mostly, as far as I saw, honestly and truly peaceful. I can't tell you how many of them were offering uh, bottles of water. A- at one point when I had to clamber over some very rough, gnarly tree limb or tree roots, I should say, somebody just stuck out a hand and helped me cross over the tree roots. Things like that happened all day long. Now, there were those who were up against the police lines. And the police, I have to I have to really give credit to them. The sheriff's departments that came from around the, uh, the area, from as far away as New York City even, police units, security units, they were very professional. And uh, they had blocked off the area entirely around the Capitol building and the Capitol grounds Nobody got anywhere near the Capitol building. And they apparently had undercovers within the crowds because they kept moving the barriers, which were these metal bicycle rack type of barriers you've seen. They kept moving them in a way that blocked and channeled and even upon occasion corralled the protesters. It was extremely professionally done. Yes, those were up, there were those up against the lines. 
of police. And we saw a number of uh, two or three young men actually who had gotten pepper sprayed and, and their shirts were off and they were, they were really burned, but they were the ones pushing, you know, right up at the front against the police lines. And that's what happens. But overall, the vibe was more, you know, hippie, uh, 1960s kind of uh, atmosphere. Yes, the chanting, mostly free, free Palestine over and over and over again, bullhorns and, and megaphones and that sort of thing. But overall, it, 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 it was not until the very end of the day. And by the end of the day, I mean somewhere around, oh, 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon eastern time and at that point the protesters had finished pretty much they were all wandering off and leaving leaving the area and even the police units uh were walking away from what had been the center of the protests but a bunch of these protesters then went up to union station the great big very beautiful train station that is not very far from capitol hill from the capitol building itself and that is where they became violent. They were absolutely jihadis there. They were the ones that took down the three American flags. There are three flag poles there. They took down those flags. They raised up that red and black and green one in its place. And the American flag, at least one of them on the ground in, in, the, in the videos we've all seen burning. Um, I think that action there probably took the security people by surprise because it had seemed that everything was over. I was on a street corner with friends actually waiting for an Uber to come pick us up and take us to a restaurant. It was over. So as we're standing there, we heard three flashbangs go off. They had to be stun grenades. We were taken aback and saw car after car after vehicle, security lights flashing, the sirens going headed to Union Station, which was really just a block away from where we were standing. So uh, I think that finale to the entire event probably took security by surprise, but overall earlier, it was more Woodstock than Jihadi. Um, <laughs> although I was not at Woodstock, make that clear. But then I, I just have to say the aftermath, what happened later that evening uh, when we were all gone. And after darkness had fallen, you've probably seen this.